Okay, guys, um, okay, so, I haven't really done an announcement update video since, like, uh, I announced how to fix it, and, um, well, uh, there's some stuff I can update you guys on, um, so, one, how to fix it is going amazingly well. I honestly did not think the reception for this show was going to be as good as it was. These videos get more, get at least four times the views as a normal book review gets. And that to me was like unfathomable because I was always like, I don't get views because I'm not popular. And now I realize I don't get views because nobody wants to see me review another Star Trek book. And that's kind of a sad thought that I can't review what I want to review and have people watch it. I have to, I don't use the word candor, but I have to embrace the niche. Book reviewing is a niche thing. No one else does it like I do. I can assure you of that because honestly, I am the most peculiar person. There's no way anybody else would read books like I do. And you'd think that would be a, a strong suit, but it's not. I review books like when Carter reviews comics and like Nostalgia Critic reviews movies. I don't review it like a traditional book review, which is just someone telling you why a book is good. And, I don't know, that's kind of a, again, kind of a sad thought to think that you think that uniqueness would get me views. It doesn't, you know. And how to fix it, I do things that are popular. And um, so people watch it because they're like, oh, Mystery Science Theater. I like that. Oh, Ghostbusters 2. I like that. You know, and then with the book reviews, it's, a lot of it's really stuff that I like and that not a lot of other people like. I mean, Classic Novel Month was my attempt to pander and cash in on the people who don't want to read books for school. I give you an entire summary. I, I am better than Sparknotes because I also analyze it. Like, I, I can tell you, like, important stuff, because I had to read these books for school. And that's my the cash in there, but how to fix it is different, because I don't need to cash in. People just watch it, because I do popular things now. And that's not to say I don't like how to fix it. I love doing it, because it allowed me to expand my horizons, and I don't, I no longer need to justify doing something that isn't a book. When I, um... When I did in the show, it was exactly like it is now. I have not changed the format. But the thing with this was, I wanted to see if I could create a show and excise all the bits that I have in the literary layer that are carbon copied from atop the fourth wall. Which, I am not hiding that fact. People are always like, um, like when I post on forums, like, your show, is, uh, you stole a lot from Linkara. I know, I, I know that. I was inspired by Lenkara. He had a very popular show. I took what worked. And it didn't translate. I assumed it would. It didn't. I was wrong. But people always like to point that out as if I don't realize it. Like, I know. I know who I rip off. I have made no attempt to hide. If I was trying to hide about the ripping of people off, Mike Sano would not be called Mike Sano. He would be, he would just be called like the professor or something. Because, you know, I'd be hiding the fact that he's wearing the Insano goggles. And he talks like this. And he has the evil laugh and he goes, <laughs> science! Like, no, I'm not hiding it. You, people don't need to keep pointing that out to me. I know I rip off one car. But how to fix it was my attempt to excise those bits. And if you notice, it does that. For one, the show is completely different in format to the literary layer. It's a format that I devised on my own. And it originally, uh, it did go through a couple of phases. It originally just had, uh, what worked 
and what didn't work and how to fix it were one category. But I eventually moved them. But the way it worked was, if you watch one episode, you know this, and if you watch one episode of The Literary Lair from, say, a month ago, and you watch one episode of How to Fix It from, say, I don't know, any of the episodes, you will notice how I have excised all those bits. When the first moment comes on, the theme song is different. It's not me getting dressed, which is a uh, carbon copy of what I looked at in Linkara. It's animated, it's not, it's an animated background I found with, and I used keyframes with the tools in the book. And the theme music, it's not something you recognize. Why? Because I composed that myself. Not like actually composed it. I have this app on my phone called Figure that allows you to compose music, and I got it for free on the App Store when it was App of the Week. So, you know, it's useful. Like, if you take a look here, when the screen fades in, it has like, like you have the drum, and you have bass, and lead, and I can even show you. I can browse what I've made, and I can play you. The first how to fix it theme before I added in the tool thing. Before I added in all the tool sounds, it was just that. And then this what this song actually that I'm about to play was intended to be the original uh how to fix it theme. You can tell why I didn't pick it. Uh, the first one sounds better. Actually, that, the How to Fix It theme was originally meant to be the theme song for the That Guy with the Glasses Secrets podcast. But, because that thing has been in development, or it had been in development, because we've already done an episode, for months. And I had composed that, but then How to Fix It came along and I needed a song, and I really liked that, so I was like, screw it, I'll use it. And, uh, you know, it happened. And I li also like how I can make all the thumbnails myself, and it's kind of easier than the literary layer, because, like, with how to fix it, I have the big logo that was originally just meant to be the thumbnail image, and I just got a Photoshop in the logo of the movie, a character from the movie, and then me, either Photoshop it onto a character or dress like someone from the movie. So it was a lot of, you know, it's fun and you know, it's easier for me to make, honestly, with a couple of layers on Paint.net. But, oh wow, I've been talking for a long time. Where am I going with this? Right. Uh, it's just kind of an update video, just kind of explaining how things have been going. Um, the Mass video is my most watched uh, literary lore episode, and I realized why. Mass is popular, and also, I found the... I found the intense mass fandoms on Reddit and Tumblr, so I made sure that they saw it. Anyway, I've been rambling for too long, and uh, you guys probably don't want to listen to me talk anymore. But basically, all I want to do is say, you know, it's, you know, kind of an update and stuff. So, uh, see you guys uh, later. Uh, right now, I'm back in the weekly schedule, I hope. So, you know, see you next time.